How's everybody doing today? Thank you for coming out and joining me this evening. Um, today, being zone. My apologies for being a little bit late to stream today. I had a meeting that kicked in uh, rather late. Uh, kind of had to be on it. Had an issue with the team that I need to resolve. So. Took care of that, and now I'm trying to monitor ice travel back from Virginia. See me checking my watch or something. Text that I just need. Meetings are fun. Personnel style meetings are even better. Dealing with a team that's a little disgruntled, it gets easier. But yeah. Good times. So on the last stream, uh, we started our project uh, Gold Dragon, which is our rendition of a Rook Mark I. Um, we do have the base model with several um, mods in place for this already. Um, we do have Dulcifers, um, idlers, and motor mounts, which just allows for a really good stop point for your carriages. Um, we also have an updated bed that uses a clamp style um, to hold the bearings in. And you will notice that I did swap these out originally. Um, I tried a couple of different Element UU bearings that were chunky. Then I switched over to an Element UU dryland bearing, and I was still, it was smoother running, but I was still getting a little bit of, like if I went from the middle, it slid well, but if I started up here at the front, I would still get a little catching and dragging. So what I did was I took the uh, Element UU bearings off the front of my D-Bot and went ahead and put them in here and, it's moving a lot nicer. So that'll be the way to go. We do have a mod over here for uh, use of an Ender 3 or Creality style end stop. Um, I have also printed out two other types that I might give it a try. We'll, we'll see. I haven't quite decided which way I want to go. Because I'm realizing, you know, right there, that would be bottom for Z. Um, so I'm probably losing another, I don't know, centimeter worth of bed travel. And I'm not sure if it's worth really fighting for or not. We'll, we'll play with that a little bit later. Um, I did throw some belt on here and realized that these motors will not work at all. Um, so I did go ahead and order a set of motors from Stepper Online. Stepper Online motors off of Amazon. So I ordered them yesterday and they came in today. So it's really good. And this is just a standard set of motors. Standard set of what? 17 HS 15 1504 SX1. Model that we're going to be using. Um, and they do come with their pins, and there are standard mini six pin for the motor side, but they do have the DuPont style connectors on the other side. So what I'll do is I'll just get the right length, clip those off and put JST connectors on them. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is do some motor swaps today. Luckily we only have two in place, so it's just gonna be real easy to swap those out. Don't worry about the actual cabling here two and we will pull the 
third one out, which will be for z axis with some assigned for the time being. It's good to have spare motors, but unfortunately, I have a lot of the reality motors. And you know, with these pressed on pulleys and the fact that the um, the actual oh the the drive rods on them are round, so they don't have the uh, ground down D shape. So I can still reuse these. I'll pop the uh, pulleys off of them and I'll grind a uh, flat onto the sides. I can still use these for other, other projects down there. So how's your day going, Chewy? And how about you, Buddha? You guys having good days today? Should ask Chewy if he's staying out of trouble, but well, here, so there's a yeah. So, Buddha, you can reuse the um. The inner three motors on a switch wire build. Um, the Y axis is pretty good. Um, in fact, I'm using the Y motor on Red Dragon just behind me. Um, the actual Creality Y motor still. I did use different motors. I used stepper on lines for Blue Dragon and had some motors from parts built that I used for the XZ on Red Dragon behind. Those all work. Steve Builds did the Dark Dog mod for a printer that he was going to give to a friend, and I believe he re he reused um, X, the Y, and the Z motor off of that build, or off the Creality machine for that build. And the only one that was different was the you know the small round pancake stepper for. Stepper on line motors are really good. I mean, they've been in the industry for a while. They do a lot of, I'll say, OEM rebrands. Yeah, stepper on line motors are real good. And, and quite honestly, I would trust them more than like two trees or whatever. I mean, I would, there's nothing wrong with the Creality motors. I've used them a lot. And you can buy them off of Amazon, and they won't have a pulley, and they'll have a D in them, like a standard, you know, stepper motor that we're used to using. So why they use the press pulleys, I don't know, unless it's just a cost-saving feature for them. So it'd be cost-saving. I guess you can machine, you know, use a machine to push the pulley on, where do the other way you probably need. Woman. I can think of. Yeah, and that's the thing is I would start trying to use as much of the Creality stuff as you can. Um, you just have to be cognizant of which motor you use on which side for the X and Z. But if it you know, down the road, yeah, go ahead and replace them. Get the good pulleys and replace them. All right, and so these are, I mean, they're snug, but they should be just a tad loose because what we'll do um, is once we get the, the X cantry on here, we'll actually go through and we'll start lining these up and get some belts on her. And we we'll want them all the way forward when we put the belts on initially and pull them back to tension them. And that's how you tension your belts on this, it's just physically moving. 
Butter's back. Yeah, with the Ender 3 to switch for our build. I really like that. You know? I really like that build. It goes well. And I want to say, you know, the, the set of five motors, I think they sell them in like one, three, and five. And a set of five motors. Oh, what would it take? Um, 50, like 40 something, 50 bucks. Wasn't too expensive. You know, if you only need like two motors for the, X, for the XZ and you want to reuse the Y motors, Go ahead and just buy two. You no, know, these these I've used Stepper online in the past, and they've been really good. There's a lot of people. In fact, I think Stepper online were on the bomb at one point. Um. Okay, so we had left our rails loose. Um, to a degree, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just set one rail what we're going to do um and all i'm going to do there is back off our screws just a bit and i am going to take and just push that rail all the way over um towards the end side and what i'm doing is Basically, I'm going to off-center this rail um, based on the screws and the screw hole. So I'm just going to push it to the side and lock this down. And that way, I'll have one side that's locked down, and we'll key the other side off of it once we get the gantry on. So we'll get the gantry on, and then will run it back and forth, and this rail will auto-align based on the size of the gantry itself. So, um, before I start putting the gantry on it and basically painting myself into a corner, I do want to go ahead and get the idler um, back here for the um, this will be for the Z belt, for a belt of Z. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it on the side to make it a little bit easier. And it's an M5 by 25 nut. I'm going to go ahead and just get that started to thread through. Say that. Wow. started a bit. And the reason I was laying it down is because that way gravity is working in my favor. Um, yeah, and if you use the, the LDO frame, then you can also swap out, I mean, you can start with the ender bed, and then if you get the, the funds for a better bed, you can swap out to the actual Mark 52 Crucis style bed, and you'll get a little bit more space um, to print on because the, the ender build surface is, what, two, it's 235 by 235, but usable is supposedly 220 by 220. Um, and with the the um, the Prusa, then you get a literal two thirty five by two thirty five or two fifty. So you do get a little bit more space. All right. Make tweezers for a reason. So once again, I'm not using the precision shims. I'm using standard washers. So you've got 
kind of like the burr on one side, then the shiny on the other. The burr side, I always put to the plastic and leave the shiny towards the bearing. So we'll get that in, we're gonna put a bearing on there. And then we'll need to move this in a little bit more. Give us just another little lip. You just wanna see that screw come proud and that'll give you room to put in the top bearing. Going to be another one where it's going to be really, really tight fit. I can see now, and that's where having the precision shims this gets a lot easier and it won't be as tight. But you do need to have something so that, that bearing is not right up against the plastic because that bearing won't go right up against the plastic. Going to be a tight fit, so you're going to have to work. Well, like I said, if I was using the actual precision shims, hey, Cedar Craft, how are you doing? Then the precision shims are the actual, like they're made to be the the right um, diameter or not diameter thickness. Right. So because these have the burrs on them, they can be a little bit thicker in spots, and I think that's what hangs up on them. Um, and if you if you have the precision shims, they're flat on both sides, so you wind up not having this issue. So. Let's see if I can get some of the burr off. I'm going to have to take it out and try and get the burr off both sides. We're doing just a tad bit of, we'll say part removal, aka plastic removal. So how are you doing this evening, Cedar Craft? Hey, Nick, 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 2020, how are you? So we are going through and building a Rook Mark I, the Rolahan Rook that a lot of people are talking about lately. Everybody seems to like these little tiny printers and tiny printer that is mostly printed and can use a lot of off the shelf parts is even better. Put this up here so when I come in here and just try and what I'm trying to do is make sure I don't have any burrs or anything that's in there or like an over extruded um, layer line. Basically, I just buy myself just a shade more room. Put that stack in there. Hey, 
Hey, Royal Nomi, how are you doing? You having a good day today? Okay. Trying to design your own stealth printer, huh? All right, so once again, what I'm doing, standard bearing stack. So I get my... Um, my uh, screw going just a tad bit. Take my washer, put it down in there. First flange nut with the flange up against the washer side. Then I will run my bolt in some more. Just until I see it start to break the edge there. Then I'll go in with my other um, bearing. You can see that it's caught there now. And then I'll take my last washer and shiny side down. Hopefully we got whatever burr was there out of the way. Persuade it into position. And once again, if I was using um, precision shims, this would probably not be this tight. Um, it would just self-align and self-center so much easier. The fact that this is a tight fit, it's actually not that bad because you want it to be a tight fit anyhow. That's what will keep the tension up against the races on the bearing and then allow your bearing to roll smooth. Why are you annoyed, Royal Nomi? Okay, you're trying to set up a capture card? I would love to help you with that, but I, I don't use one. I don't have one. And just like all the other screws, we're just taking it until it, it basically bottoms out and it gets tight. That's it. We don't want to ug a dug at any of these. Bearing is still rolling rather nicely, so that's good. Um, so after last stream, we did go through and print a new um, XY gantry, or, yeah, XY joint and X gantry, and this is an all-in-one piece, and I have not gone through and say deburred or reamed any of the holes, so they are what they are, and we'll work with them. Um, and if I remember right, we need to go ahead and get the lower M6 or M3 by 6 nuts in first. M3 by 6 bolts in first. And that is what will attach it down to carriages. There's three on each side. One thing I didn't do was order any more M3 by 6 socket heads, so at some point I will have to switch over to button heads. Clearance needs. What I do is I just try and get it down in there and see if it's going to go in nicely and drop through or if I just have to get twist and turn, which is what I did, but not there, and I'm just getting it right at the at the bottom, so it's going to be easy to work on once I get it on the carriages. Yeah, now what are you trying to run for your capture card? Is it just, is it like a uh, capture for your game, so that you can run 
so you can stream your uh, Call of Duty, or is it a capture card for your cameras? So the build size on the base model Rook is 120 by 120, I believe 120. I believe it is pretty much the same thing as you're going to get with the Voron V0. It's just mostly printed and it's not enclosed or high temp unless you want to make it that way. Okay, to stream your video game, I definitely, like, about the only way I do that is be um, playing it on the actual computer and streaming that way. I, that's all I would know how to do. If you're going to like stream from a console or something, yeah, I believe. I have not done that for other folks that can and get these out just a little bit so I can center them and find the holes on the carriage. Just found that one. I'm not going to snug any of them down yet. I'm just going to get them started. Until I get all of them on. Because once again, the plan here is to use the X gantry to align the other Y rail. So we, we untightened these bolts, pushed the rail all the way over to the side, then tightened them all back down. And by doing it this way, we will ensure that our um, left and right gantry will be aligned on the y-axis. Kind of feels a little free floating and wiggly right now, but we'll tighten everything down and you'll see it all straighten up. Hey, how's it going, zombie? That's 69 bits. Well, thank you, dear sir, for all the bits. Ride That's 69. awesome. So you're coming over to watch me build and, and yell at me for doing the wrong things, right? Because I'll be honest, I was watching your build video again today while I had time. just to make sure that I wasn't forgetting steps. And then I'm going to just lay this back. And once again, I'm going to use gravity to assist me here. And we're going to use M3 by 10 bolts for the X rail. There's six of them on the Gulsifer Speed Mod. There would only be four if you were doing the regular um, prints, and that would be two on each side. The Gulsifer Speed Mod, there's going to be six. Because the regular one, you would just have the pieces on the side, and there wouldn't be a centerpiece. And we are going to use M3 nuts on the back, so we'll go ahead and get some of those ready for us. And I did put rubber stops on here. Every time I get linear rails, I keep the rubber stops so I can always reuse them on whatever rail. Because a lot of my rails tend to be reused from project to project. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to get screw on each side just so I know, okay, now that should be somewhat lined up so I can put the other screws in easier. Just getting these lined up. And we'll take our M3 hex nut. It's going to get one of these screws back a little bit more. It's not going to protrude out the back really that much, but you want it to protrude out the back, get the M3 nut going on it. 
one of these on will then tip it up so you can see three hex nuts and all we're doing is as we start to screw this through start protruding out the back on there hold it in place as we screw the rest of the way in you'll reach the point where it'll start turning some that's good because we will eventually take all these down it's going to basically self-align as we do this because it's got all six holes there all we're doing is just getting these on so that we go through and tighten them all up. Got a case of fat fingers tight spaces. Yeah, um, so I went ahead and did, you know, basically the bottom and top frame. I think I actually might have went with the more holes version of the bottom and top frame. Um, it's the Gulsifer um, uh, Eiler brackets and motor mounts and, of course, the Gulsifer speed rail. Not that I'm necessarily going to be chasing all out speed with this build, but I just like it because it seems like it's a little more stable than just having a free floating uh, gantry. Take the plugs out now that we have basically end stoppers with the actual sides of the rail. We'll need to get the two in the middle. in place nuts and start working and so I started off zombie um, I the only LM8 LUUs I had were on my D-Bot behind me and I didn't want to take that you know take those apart to work on it so I was just going to use just regular LM8 UU bearings and they were chunky and grabbing and crap. I probably just need to throw them away, so I stopped trying to read the time. And I figured, okay, well, I'll use my Delrin bearings. And those worked good if I was grabbing the bed by, like, the center or the back. But as soon as I grabbed it from the front bed mounting point, yeah, it, was, it, it, it wasn't... Uh, Um, it, it was it was getting all wonky and not really want to slide up and down real well. So I went ahead and bit the bullet and took the front bed rails off of the D bot behind me to get the LM8 UU bearings. And now they're working a lot better. Um, you were using a wrench. I'm going to. Use Handy dandy because it's going to start in the center and work my way out and just make sure that these are cranked down. I thought that's just a bad.
I, I know zombie. Hey, Westry, how are you doing, sis? I know zombie. When I was watching your video, you made sure that all your nuts were in the upright and vertical position, and it'll probably annoy me if I if I look at these too long, and I'll probably wind up doing the same thing. But for now, I'm just going to get dug of these down without doing that. My NEMA hammer. Um, I, yeah, I don't have a NEMA hammer, though I've got plenty of NEMAs I could actually just use the motor just to bang on things. That's, I can always do that. Um, yeah, you missed it yesterday. I had my, my dead blow hammer there. How you doing today, Westry? I mean that that is pretty much what we can use these for, right? They're they're just weights. Take these and just bang with them. Okay, so we got these motors in place. Um, this will be for the Z once we get down there. Um, what else? Okay, so um, what I did here was, once again, I loosened up the four bolts on the left side, pushed the rail all the way to the right, and re-screwed them down. The other side's still free-floating. And so what we're going to do is make sure that this is still going pretty well. And we're just going to move this forward and back and let it glide. And this is going to align the right side to the left. We'll just move it just forward of the next of one of these bolts, and we'll just start throwing it down just till we get a break. Not a break, but feel the tension. We're not going to ugga dug anything. It's going to keep moving it. Then we'll do the next one. Okay, you're gonna look for a bit, sis? Okay. Oh, sis, yeah, let me know when you're back and I've got an update on your, on the thing you sent me. And I have found that in the process of tightening, not on this particular printer yet, but on a couple of my other printers, that it seems like that um, rail does shift and it starts binding up. So, if at any point you're doing this, you're putting belts on or, or whatever, and all of a sudden you have an axis that feels like it's starting to bind up or get less, uh, I don't know, just it doesn't feel right, stop. Undo a couple of things, because doing that now is real easy, and uh, it's, it's definitely a lot easier to mess with right now than later. But don't worry about the tracking number. I got notification that it was, uh, I got shipping notification today. And it should be here by Thursday, unless you sent me more than one package. It did say the second, which is Thursday, right? Ooh, okay, well, yeah, you, you take care of that meeting there, sis. That's the reason I was a little bit late is I got called into a meeting where one of my uh, my teams was about to implode after getting a project status. So just the one package? Okay, then yes, it should be here Thursday. Okay. Okay, so we got that done. We need to do our, our idlers at the top now. And once again, these are going to go through and screw into the bottom. And you don't really want to ugga dug these down either, because if you do that too much, you can actually put too much pressure on the top of your carriage and cause a little binding. I don't think you'll damage it. You'll just have to back it out a little bit. And to do this, once again, I'm going to set this back so that, well, I'll try and set it like this for now. Um, I really need to do it with this side up higher. Because that way we'll have gravity 
working to our advantage as we're putting things in over here. I'll see if I can't uh, work this around. And black on black is probably going to work really, really well. See if I can't get some kind of contrast so you can see what I'm doing. That may help some. Okay. Well, hey, Rolahan, how are you? Oh my God, thank you for coming in and joining. I was like, this is, this is like your little guy here. Right, exactly, who's that guy, right, Zambi? Um, so we are doing a little bit of the art of uh, improvisation, um, simply in the fact that I don't, I'm not using the um, precision shims. Partly because I can't figure out where I put my precision shims. So I'm just using regular M5 washers and needing to come in and, and apply a little bit of liberal uh, filing to kill the burr off the back side a little bit. Um, same thing on these bearing stacks. I'm just setting the screw in a little bit to give me some place to hook the... Uh, Give me some place to hook the actual um, washer and bearing onto as I go to put it in place. But yeah, it's a little flimsy right now, but as we add more to this, it's going to tighten up really, really good. Gracious, this is. Apparently, I might have wanted to. Uh, Work on the pressure advance. So these were printed on um, on Red Dragon behind me, and I had just gone through and run input shaper on everything. And I noticed on the prints that I just took off that I've got a little bit of elephant's foot. So I think what I'm running into here is it's just an awfully tight fit. I'm afraid of running the reamer through these again and having to reprint it yet again. So we'll just we'll fight through plastic. It's all good. Could be worse. I could be trying to thread it into steel. All right, we got those two started, so that'll get us going here. We have our tweezers, and we'll start standard bearing stack. So shim, um, bearing bearing shim. Like I said, I am going to try and work this burr off the back just a bit. Get it a little bit flatter. Oh, wow. Okay, what'd you do, zombie? Like, bring in the whole uh, Rook crew to watch me do this build, and now you're going to make me all nervous? Because I do believe I have a couple of uh, Canrog 87's um, mods on this printer. Oh yeah, this is a great little printer. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, yeah, I'm going to have to build one. You know, it didn't matter that you know, Rolahan was hyping it, and Zombie was hyping it, and everybody else was hyping it. It was just, it was going to have to be built because... I love my Voron uh, D0, and this this same form factor is just it's just awesome. I love this little form factor because the vast majority of things that I print can can print on that uh, V0, and you know when you when you need something bigger, you know there's plenty of other printers that will get you the, the bigger build plate size. But I just find these things, they heat up faster, especially if you're not going with a heated plate, which you don't have to do a heated build plate on a book. It just goes straight painter's tape or kept on tape or something like that. And what comes but um, 
Yeah. Especially if you're doing something heated where, where you need like uh, a heated chamber for ABS or ASA. Yeah, it, it's a godsend to have that little printer. So as long as it fits in that size, it heats up real quick and the chamber, you know, heats up real quick. So Rick owners only buy, oh, come on, zombie, you got plenty, but hey, and you've serialed at least one, so. And I feel like I've got a little bit of over extrusion going on Red Dragon behind me. Like I said, I I uh, played with the pressured band, or not pressured band, um, input shaping. So over the last couple of days, I got my my input shaper high pico dongle set up. And I've been going around, you know, one printer at a time doing each one. So I did the Mercury Rising, which you can see on the corner of the screen on the left. That one is a couple days in on a multi-day print. And it's going to be a Warhammer 40,000 um, Chaplain's Helmet. And yeah, that's that's going to be a nice helmet when it's done. But I got to keep an eye on it because I'm starting to run low on that particular spool of filament. Got another one. It's going to be just over a kilogram of material. Yeah, I think we have a winner. Oh. Go ahead and type it down. Um, yeah, I printed enclosed ASA on the uh, on the V zero, and I've also. I'm going to go ahead and turn this one around. Next slide. Um, print ABS, ASA. I know you don't necessarily need to <clears throat> with some ASAs, but yeah. If I'm just trying to make sure it's it comes out good and I don't have any issues. And especially since this room has its own um, AC circuit. <clears throat> But it still works off the same, uh, like, AC condenser unit and stuff, but it's a separate zone. And it gets a lot hotter up here, especially in the afternoons um, when we have good weather, because the light hits and comes right up against this window. And then if I've got, you know, two, three, four printers going, it gets hot in here real, real fast. <clears throat> oh, thanks, Cameron, for stopping in, and, and thanks for following. I appreciate it. I'm definitely going to uh, be posting pictures of this on Twitter, and I, of course, will go for a serial once I get her built and up and running. So... You'll definitely see this. And in fact, I can guarantee you we're going to have at least one more stream on this build simply because I have a bet on order and a hot end on order. Um, my plan, unless somebody tells me, no, it won't work, got to switch up, you know, do it now, is to use the Revo CR edition on this build. So I actually have two of those coming. Hey, thanks for showing up, uh, Ken Rog. I appreciate it.
Yeah, um, that's my plan. I ordered one from E3D online because I did a survey and got a coupon for them. So I was like, okay, well, might as well go ahead and get another Revo and I need a CR for this build. So I ordered one. And then I was like, I don't know if that's going to come quickly or not. So I may have ordered another one when I ordered the bed. Um, and I was really, 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 really tempted on getting the LDO polymide bed from um, Fabrico. Because they had, they had the polymide beds in stock. And my thought was, well, I'll get that and put that on my V0 and then take my V0 bed and put it on this. And then I got to thinking, oh, wait, I've got the Kirigami, which means I've, I've cut and spliced the wires on that using a Wegu connector. And I'm not sure if, you know, how I could do that. And I've, I'd have to do some butt connectors and stuff to bring that bed over here. And, of course, the polymide has a, a, a more robust um, power supply. For it, so I definitely have to go over on the V01, and then I'd have to bring the other bed over here. Um, but yeah, and it did good, and I am not tightening these all the way just yet because if i do then it's going to be harder to get the next set in so i'm going to leave them just a little bit loose um so that'll allow me to have a little bit of flex to get the other in yeah i saw your chc cr10 um hot end and kind of really like the look of it i don't have a need for it right yet but i mean there there's always another build that you know that can be done be another need and who knows maybe sometime in the near future i decide i'm going to do a subscriber stream or something and if we hit a certain goal then maybe just maybe I'll give away a printer bill. Just saying. Well, maybe I, I say, okay, you know, we, we reach a specific goal and I will do a rook build for somebody. They get to pick the colors and I'll get the colors and print them out and uh, do another, you know, get all the stuff and do another rook build. I can actually build that on stream if they want, or I can just fast track it and get it to them either way. What do people think about that idea? Oh, you might have something new for me to build. Thanks. That's, that's going to be great, Chewy. <clears throat> I always need new ideas on things to build. Like, I know some people are doing it, but I'm kind of curious about getting my hands on the actual Fabrico Rook kit and then building it and comparing it to, you know, like this build. And kind of have a, <clears throat> not necessarily a cheap build and then a high-end build, but I'm not going to say that this is necessarily a cheap build. But it's it's far from an expensive one as well. But looking at what's in that Fabrico kit, I mean Rolahan, you've got to be happy because there's there's a lot of good good choices that went into that kit.
yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to that. Once again, on these, as I go and, and tighten these all the way in, all I'm looking for is that change in tension, which means the head of the bolt has now made contact with the plastic because these bolts are really just acting as like a pin. And if you really squish down too much, like I said, you can apply additional pressure to the top of the carriage and then it may start dragging in spots and you'll have issues so don't necessarily want to crank down on those too much these these top parts are a lot easier to get in because you got a little bit more room to spread them out some Yeah. So, uh, um, zombie, I, I didn't get far enough in your video to figure out um, what did you actually go with for your electronics, like your controller and everything. Oh, that would be nice to see the crap. Yeah, and I haven't even thought about doing something like that where I actually, you know, I'm naming my, my things like Red Dragon and Blue Dragon and stuff. And if I can get some good images, I can actually make them, you know, actually have dragon, you know, whatever on them. Whether it's, uh, you know, I can apply decal on the back plate when I finally cut and put the back plates on or something like that. Because my wife has a, Cry cut, she can do the vinyl. These and the rotation. By the way, these tweezers come in handy, especially on doing builds with finicky stuff. Just saying. Still moving pretty nicely, so we're good here. Cut. Okay, the Manta M4P with an external 350. Okay. Yeah, I'm using the Manta M4P on Red Dragon, and that works out really, really nice. So what I've currently got set up in here, <clears throat> is a raspberry or not a raspberry a victory tech skr pico and it's currently a raspberry pi w the uh, zero w um and it's all ready to go i've got it all configured for clipper already so i've already got um main sale image on here and already worked to get the clipper well the um <clears throat> Hey, Gulsifer, how are you doing? Thank you for following. That's awesome. Yeah, 
Tommy, you brought everybody in here. I, I have to rookery? What's a rookery? I don't know what a rookery is. Um, so yeah, I've got it set up right now. Uh, I've already got Clipper. I took the uh, the base Kretner config from the SKR Mini E3 V3 and just cut it over and made sure all the pins are right for the Pico. So I should be able to just plug and play everything and give it a shot once we get there. Like I said, I should have everything but a hot end and um, bed by the end of tonight. The rest will probably be here by Saturday, Saturday stream. Toolhead and the fan setup. Would, would it look something like this? <clears throat> the, the zombie head? So, two inserts from the front, one insert from the back, one at an angle on the back, two at the top. But yeah, I, I did the, uh, the 4010 um, rookery with the... Um, the zombied backplate. I'm going to run a uh, E3D um, Revo CR on this. Just, well, just because um, I didn't have, I mean, I've got a couple of straight Creality hot ends, but I was finding that the heat blocks wouldn't work with the with the rookery. Won't fit in there. Um, or at least not with this version of the short one. So, I, and this is set up for the short one. I don't, I don't think I'll, I shouldn't have to go with the long version with, with the Revo, right? The short one should be fine because the long version, everybody's running a Volcano hot end on, right? Yeah, I, well, in the CHC, is pretty much the knockoff of the Revo, right? It's just a knockoff ceramic heater um, heat core for the hot end. <clears throat> so yeah, what do we got? We got that. Um, I'm going to need to put pulleys on. Get the belts going. This is where I always get confused. Um, high pulley on the right, low pulley on the left, right? Low pulley, high pulley. Yeah, <clears throat> at some point, you know, I looked at the CHC. Um, now, do you still have to hot tighten those when, when you uh, screw the nozzles in? Do you still have to do some type of hot tightening on those like you would a V6? I do not have my own Discord Acetocraft, though that is something that will probably happen more in the future. Yeah, and that's the, the thing. I mean, it's, it's not that it would be a, a bad ecosystem. It'd still be, you know, I'd still have all those nozzles and everything that I can use with it. But I'm liking having the Revo on so many printers. Um, and had I, had I planned ahead, um, the Mercury Rising that you see down there, um, printing on the lower left. This one, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't resize that. So this one right here is running. Uh, a uh, Dragon High Flow 
with a 0.4 hardened steel nozzle ring. I didn't have a, I didn't have a 0.6 hardened steel, so I need to get one. I'm assuming that before I even say it, Zombie's going to say, hey, go get an Undertaker from West 3D. And I probably will. Um, but doing this particular helmet, a 0.6 or a 0.8 would have been a lot better. Uh, this is a large helmet, and this is only the first part. There's like 10 to 12 accessory pieces that get printed and go on it, and it'll have like um, hoses that go around from the, from the sides to the front ventilator piece. Now I get two. Of course, you always have to have a spare, right? I don't have a West 3D set up, Chewy, but I get you. West3D.com. But yeah, yeah, so th this helmet's coming out nice. You can see it's got the uh, teeth just peeking through down at the bottom there by the, by the rising, then the nose piece. These organic supports are going really well, and they're going to be a lot easier to clean up than standard supports would. So I've had this helmet for a while and I've been dying to use it, just waiting for the organic supports to get into the wild. Oops, I thought I just resized, but it was the wrong thing. Look at me right. There we go. Corner, put the ender up, get the right guys in there. Um, yeah, so. You can help me set that up, Chewy. I'm sure. I am sure. You're the official tag the thing, zombie. Okay. So zombie says, hey, throw it, you know, let's show a shout out for West 3D and you gotta, you gotta bang West 3D, huh? Yeah, West 3D doesn't have a section for Rook, um, but Fabrica does. And trust me, I, I will most likely be adding a link to um, Fabrica for the pre-order for this in the description on this, as well as when I put it over on um, YouTube, because I've been adding these over onto my YouTube channel. So, all right, so I'm going to do... got the talking so high on the right low on the left just gonna start off apparently let me get the uh, Right size driver because that will definitely. And just going to kind of line up with top edge for the moment. I know that we'll have to align it once. Put the belts on. What's going to be coming up next? So I'm just going to get these in place. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, everybody's getting too much of my money lately, according to my wife. Whether it's Fabrico for the zero G stuff and probably for uh, Rook Kit down the way to KB3D, like I get a lot of things from them for my inner three switchwire builds. 
it, and I have looked at West 3D as well, and, and it all depends on who has what at the time that I'm ordering. Um, you know, West 3D is, of course, on the West Coast, and KB3D and Fabrica are over here on the East Coast, so that works out a little bit better for me. But, you know, whoever has what I need, when I need it, is really who's going to get the business. Um, so I do have a little bit of a length of cable and from my initial just kind of wagging look, it looked like there was enough here to do a side. So I am going to try and run this through. Gantry's not wrecked out of the gates. That's always good. Yeah, KB3D works great. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've gotten some good service out of them, which has been really nice. And, you know, with them being up in Ohio, it's not too far away. I'm over in North Carolina. So that works out pretty good for me. I would say if that worked out pretty darn well. Let me go ahead and tighten a couple of Tighten a couple of these up so that motor would not sag as bad. And I'm pushing them all the way to the front as I do this so that once we run the belts and we get them on there, then we'll have the ability to, we'll have the full length, the tension on it. Yeah, KB3D is in Ohio and Fabrico, they're in Twinsburg, Ohio, is where all their stuff mails out of. And Fabrico is down in Florida. Yep, so I've got the belt piece for the rookery, and somebody said something about using these little printed pieces versus the zip ties, because it makes it a lot easier to get them in and secured rather than using zip ties. Yeah, and I, I I know that I had plenty of belt. I just had that small piece there, and I, I figured it was going to work. So that way it's... Cause I, I bought a whole slew of belt from, I don't know, KB3D um, when I was doing the um, interwire build. So I knew I had plenty of belt on hand for this. just a matter now of running it and making sure that you know it's in the right orientation so the game all up. Just gonna ran find a good link. Cut. Draw cuts. It's cheap.
Yeah, so I'll, now I got the belts roughly cut and laid in place. Fuzzy. Now I have plenty of extra, but we will take our printed part and you've got a one end, it's kind of hard to show on camera, but one end will be a little bit tighter than the other. And you want the Help me out here, Chewy, or not Chewy, uh, Zombie, you want the, the larger openings away from the centerpiece, right? That the, no, it's the other way around. You want the smaller opening side to be away from the center. Because that way I'll make room for when you loop them around. We're going to get these started. We're going to have our rookery piece, the, 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 I will call it the X carriage, and the front of the X carriage is the one that has the inset holes for your screws. I remember that, um, zombie. I see anybody says you never make good educational videos. So we're going to take this and fold these nice new crisp belts over. And we're going to want to try and make sure, because I'm anal, that they're about the same size and you don't need like eight or nine notches. You just need a couple of notches. Make sure that they feed over into the same notch. And slide both ends on at the same time. And if you do everything right and the moons and the stars align, it'll slide on. It will slide on. You will, there we go. Slide on. You gotta do a little bit of wiggling because once again, I think I had some, some elephants put on this. I'm going to try and move them over and get them just as tight as I can. That'll make sure that we're nice and locked in. And then make our lives easier. Take the other side. Get it on our belts. I personally have a lot of extra belt there, so we will be cutting that down some as well. Um, but I am going to take, what were these? These were M3 by sixes. I had a couple of those. Now, I am going to ask, um, Dulcifer, is there enough room on these for button heads or are they sized tight snug for um, socket heads? Size tight for socket heads. Button heads are best. Agree with that. If button heads will get in there, that'll be great because I only had like two, and I think one of them just. Pop that one up to a lost one, I'll have to double check. So. And.
what I'm doing is just getting these started in there to give me end is somewhat secure before I go through and pull the other belt through and try and get it at least initially tightened. Yes, button heads did work, which is nice because, like I said, I've got plenty of button heads. I just didn't have a lot of socket heads. Downsides of using black fasteners on a black printer. Drop them and all right. So we've got one in secured. We've got our um, print end helper piece done. And then all I'm going to do is just try and figure out decent length because I don't want to try and fold over and have to work through like ton. So initially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line it up with the other side and say, okay, roughly that's where I need to cut. Now, probably one of the better ways of doing this is run one belt and then take it off and match the other side belt to the same length. And that's how I've done all of my, oh, I should have put, um, that's how I've done my borons. And that works out really well because that way the, oh, wow, zombie, thank you for some more cheers. That is awesome. Thank you for this. Pride 57. Oh, sweet. So you're calling them the Stealth Dragons. That is awesome, dude. That is awesome. Yeah, definitely get up there on printables. I can, Find one. you know, spend more time and money on prints and things. Well, that's great. Go ahead and take this back off and at least get the belt started. Ah, is 57 the serial of your second rook? So 57 and 1. Are you saying that you've got the first serial? Or that you had to add another one because you messed up? my belts are all in place get some initial tension going on these once again i'm just folding them over making sure that they are lining up and the you know the grooves are lining up then we'll go ahead and and move our piece over Lock these belts in. I think my print tolerances on this particular part, like I said, are just a little too tight, but it's all good. Oh, 
pretty sure somebody's going to get 70 before I do. So. We're definitely going to going to get a cereal for this soon. Actually, I still need to what I was thinking is just taking a clip from the from my birthday stream where I commissioned Blue Dragon and using that as my cereal for that machine. Pride 420. Okay, so those belts are on there. I'm going to make sure that everything is just lining up still again, that I didn't pull anything out of whack. Everything does look like it's still lining up. We're going to have to move these pulleys, definitely. But um, we've got this printed piece is right up close on each side. So that'll keep our belts nice and tight. We got a little bit of excess, but with the way the um, the pulleys are set, that shouldn't be a problem. We shouldn't hit either side. So I'm just going to get this locked down on the carriage with a couple of bolts and move it just to verify that. Hey, Pete, how are you doing this evening? At least this evening for me. So thank you for coming out and joining us, Pete. We've had the whole crowd here. I think Zombie brought the entire Rook team with them. So we've had Rolahan on, Gulsifer on. Um, Kenrog? Kenrog? On. Um, so yeah, we were having a rook party earlier. And I've got the um this black bottom plate on here to protect the electronics. And I was looking out there today for you know like these printed parts that I saw on Zombies page, and I thought to myself, wow. They got one with the Rook logo on it that's raised that I could do like dual color, just doing a color swap. And I think having a black background with a, with a gold Rook would look awesome on this build. What do you guys think? I'm just tightening those down. I'm just going around in a kind of the crossing pattern. And now what I can do is loosen the set screws just a tad bit. And as I move the gantry, they should hopefully align a little bit closer to their final spot. That'll give us an opportunity. Once again, you know, we, we just did a step, so we just want to make sure that everything's moving without any binding. And it's under tension now, so I'll have a little bit of tension. And like I said, just the simple fact of moving this gantry around should help to align these belts. And then I'm just going to get down and I'm going to make a I'm going to look and make sure that these are parallel. And then when I like where they're at, I'm going to go ahead and lock these back in. Let's get doing the, the flat first, then the, the set screw to the rounded edge. We'll turn around and do the other side. Same way. Still 
too long. Too long. Bring the front and the back. That up. Make sure it's going to track. So it's sitting just a little bit proud of the. Of the um, shaft. We'll check the other side again. Oh, awesome, Lucina Kraut. That is. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Looks good. And both sides are getting with a little bit of play. That's good. Um, what I'm going to do now is unlock the ones that I locked down. And I'm going to slowly tension one side, then the other. It. I'm not going to put a whole lot of tension on it just yet. I'm going to move one at a time because I want to make sure I don't rack the gantry in the process. So. You don't need like an abnormal amount of tension on these either. Get good prints. Not like crank these down big time because these belts will um, stretch over time. There's no need to like really try and yank them all the way to the back at first. Check in the. I don't want it seems to be a little bit and move the gantry a couple of times. And everything seems to be hitting at the same time. When I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep it centered right between the uh, right here. So I want to make sure that this gantry is centered and moving it center. And then I'm looking to make sure that it that both sides touch at right about the same time. And that will tell me that my gantry isn't racked. What's going on right now? I'm going to leave that as it is for right now. And you could go through and do the pluck test with a with a uh, app. I've the lower one. You, yeah, that's what I was. I think the lower needs just a tad bit more.
I think having a setup like the uh, like the Voron B0, where you have the um, you know like a dial knob that you can basically dial up tension, would be a nice mod. Because I really like that ability. Because as the belts you know, as you as you print and those belts start to wear in and, and get a little looser, you'll want the ability. All right, see now that gantry is a bit wrecked, so I gotta, gotta do the same thing to the top one. Um you know, I like that ability to just do a some fine tuning. And especially if you're going to use like the the app to do the tuning, and you're you're trying to plug for a specific um, tune, Okay, both are at the same time. Back. And we're being, we're back to being lined up and I'll see if I can't uh, do a little tilt presentation here. But you can see when I bring this straight back. They are both hitting at the same time. That's what you're looking for. And these belts are pretty taut. They're pretty taut. So before I knock this whole thing over and out of myself, just back in the package. Put it back in the package and then what are the other things I need to do? Well, eventually I'm going to have to put another belt on to do the uh, belt of Z. I haven't made it to that part yet in the, in the build or video, so I'm still not 100% sure how that connects. I'm sure we'll find out. Now would be the time that you would go through and... Uh, you can mount your hot end and then mount this, but basically what's going to happen is your mount has a spot that's going to go right over this key notch. So that will go on, and I believe it is a M3 by 10 in a washer through the back. So an M3 by 10, and this goes at the base. Probably scoot this forward a little bit. So there's a, what we're going to do is we're coming through the base of the carriage into the base hole in this. Go ahead and get that lined up and get started. Get lined up here. Yeah. 
just going to back it off a little bit. And what you want to do is just push, push straight down and then tighten. So what you're doing is you're making sure that that's seated down at the bottom. And then it's a M3 by 8. It comes in the back of that zombie hold here, which is at an angle. And what that's going to do is that's going to push against the that notch. Glad I can get in there. Apparently my 45 degree angle is not like 45 degrees. But that's going to push against the, that little notch that this piece rusted in, and it's going to pull the top of this carriage back fully. So that's what's going to make this really tight connection on the top. And this is really designed for a quote unquote speed mod. So it's going to make sure that your rookery is very rigidly mounted. And eventually, one of the next things would be would be to actually mount the hot end, which I do not have the hot end. So um, I will hold off on doing that, but can work on putting our rookery together. I've got some 4010 fans, and I need a 3010 fan. So give me one second to step off screen and grab those. Uh, Yeah, I know I had spares for my V0, so it was just a matter of finding it. Oh, wow, is it really six days to uh, having the ability to have uh, subs per month? Wow. That, that is actually crazy. Hey, Rob Inc., how are you doing this evening? Thank you for joining. So we have been working on Gold Dragon, which is our Rook Mark I in black and gold trim. Um, we've got a number of mods by the community, whether it's Gulcifer or um, uh, Angroy. I'm sorry, let me double check his name so I'm butchering all. 
Oh, and Ron. There we go. Sorry about that. I wanted to get everybody his names right. Um, oh, thank you so much, Lucina Craft. That would be awesome. Oh, if it's a dragon, I'm pretty sure I will like it. Um, but yeah, so we've got, let's see, what all do we have? We've got the Dulcifer feet with the Rook symbol. We've got uh, a couple of other things that we'll grab. Uh, this is Gulsifer's um, speed mod for both in the motor mounts, the idler mounts, the speed mod. We're putting a rookery on. I believe is this uh, is this yours too, Gulsifer? The uh, the updated build plate. Or is this your feedback into the actual Mark One design? Because this has the uh, the um, oh, what should we call it? The clamps for the LMA EU bearings, and that really helps to get a good connection on those bearings. Because sometimes they do need a little bit of say pretensioning to slide easy or roll easily. Anyhow, um, I'm going to keep going here. It would have been best to grab my schisms. So I did go and grab some 4010 blower fans from Creality while I was at Micro Center the other day on my journey. Um, the nice thing is, is they're going to have a nice long cable, so I won't have to go through and, oh man, I thought that was a, actually it's not, that's a blower, so I may have to buy a 3010 fan. I thought I won the lottery, but I didn't. Apparently my only 3010s are 5 volt fans. So we'll have to get the one for the middle, but on your Blower fans, these will, you'll need to route your wires to be able to get them in there. Each one of your 4010 blowers wires will slightly differently, so you it going out the back. Kind of hard to see here, so see if I can't get in. But you can see right through this front corner piece here, there's a hole. You want to route the Cable down through that hole. Stick it through there, make sure you go through the top. You need to get it in that hole. Kind of like doing that. Fish it around through there. We get it out on the other side. Just to have something that you can. Stick down there, catch it, and just pull it forward. Tree, tree, you know. 
And your blower fan, the, the actual fan course will be facing out. Give you an idea of where it needs to how it needs to slide down in there. And they will just slide in directly down. So the blower outlet is facing down. These are just a friction fit in there, so just look them down in there. Feel it. Click when it hits the bottom. That's the first one done. Need to do the second one. And same thing, except this is going to be a lot easier to get through the hole because it exits out. Exits back. So it's kind of go from the top inside. You can pull it through there and do that. Pull that one through. And same thing, look for the direction and where your blower Exit point is that needs to be facing down. Just slide it in and it will press fit. Just make sure you move your cable down as you slide that in. Get a channel then to go in easy. Make sure you continue to pull the excess wire out as you push it down. Feel it clip in place. are Brook fans. Be your two fans down in there. Um, but I can't go any further because I will need to get the 3010 fan, 24 volt, because I want everything to be 24 volt. There's a channel to prevent wire to, yeah, I was trying to get it into the channel. Let me try and pull them back out and see. I feel like they should be seated just a tad bit more down there. You know what, do I need to pull the wires out of that little strain relief loop to get them down in there? I think that's what's happening is that little strain relief loop is giving it some fits, slides down in there. Uh, right in the back in in that groove but Still isn't slipping down in there nicely. I mean, I see the wire channels. It should make it easier for to slide in and out.
Go through there. Oh. Um, and like I said, I'm going to have to call that done for now. I'm going to have to order a couple more fans. Got a hot end on its way in, and I've got a bed on its way. In. I guess the other thing that we can work on while we are waiting be possibly some of the electronics. As I did mention before, I've got the SKR Pico and a Raspberry Pi Zero installed for this build. So an SKR Pico and a Raspberry Pi Zero to run Clipper. Um, I do have Clipper already installed on this, and all um, I can do the back belt. Yeah, so I have Clipper already installed, and I've already got a base config for the Pico, so that's good. Um, we can add the motor for the Z axis and run that belt. Now, once again, um, Dulcifer, because I think you're still here, and I think Rolahan had to leave. Um, the, uh, the belt, like, how does that belt actually attach to the, the build plate? I didn't see any type of attach point. At least I don't remember seeing any type of attach point in the um, STL file. I wasn't sure if there was supposed to be like a separate piece that was printed and put in, or oh, it's just it just zip ties. Okay. Line this up on the thing and get it. I'm sure we'll have to again adjust the of that. Go ahead and get this mounted up. Would have been probably a lot easier before I had stuff. To We'll be fine. We'll make it work. Oh. Um, three by ten, I'm assuming, with washers. I do have the top idler mounted. Okay, so this this is similar to what we, we would have done up top, which is bring the belt, loop it around, um, lock it together, and zip tie it. Or is it more like how it's done on the baby belt, where you basically create um, So is the design basically that you make two loops with zip ties and then a zip tie through the middle to hold them in and add tension? So it would be more like where my fingers are would be the zip ties and then there's another zip tie between the two that hold tension. Look at the bed. 
Ah, I got you. I got you. So, yeah. That makes sense. I appreciate it. A little slow sometimes. So, not a good idea to have it in section. Where the other? Sections over. Give me a second. Yeah, I I see that now. Thank you, Dulcifer. I'd say, you know, it's been one of those days with work, but I'd almost think that at this point we consider it one of those weeks. It's what, Tuesday? Three by tens one. Blender be, needs to be mounted towards the frame so that the belt goes this way. Channel in the Yeah, Chewy, one of the months, um, except it's still February, so if we if waited just a little bit more until it was March, I could already do the, yeah, it's one of those months. Once. It's up on its end. This way. And like the rest of our motors, we will make sure that it is pushed all the way up so that when we run the belt, we have the ability to then pull the motor down to tension. Belts again. Is over here, so that's good. Guys, give me just a second. I'm gonna have to check my cell phone. I did get a text from my wife and make sure that everything's okay and she made it to my hotel safely. Thank you. 
she did. Yep. So we got the motor and it's, and it's pushed up towards the frame right now. The belt is going to pull a little bit of a length off here. Started with. And. This is up through the channel. Through the eye. And then do a little loop. One channel only when we. And let me get this top side done, and then I'll show you what I'm doing on the bottom side. Okay, so what we are trying to do is the bed has a spot to bring the belt through, and then you basically have to loop it back up on itself. Got a choke of too long. So, on this side, there's a larger open channel. On the other side, which you can probably see here, there is a notch. And what we're doing is we're coming up one side around the pulley, around the idler, comes back down, and then we make a loop around that notch. And then we will simply zip tie the belt onto itself at the groove and that will give us the ability to 
of basically we're going to make a loop like that around that plastic piece, zip tie the belt there, and then we will be able to use the motor itself to tension the belt. That's why when you first do it, you have to move it all the way to the back. Yep, 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 yep. And so all I'm trying to do is put a little bit of a twist or a crease in here initially. That should give me the ability to get up and at least start getting that little loop started. And then I can come in here with a, with a screwdriver or some type of driver. And all I'm going to do is just try and push the belt down through the other side of the channel. Here we go. It start to come out. Make sure we're looped on our pulley. Kind of don't want to make it like way tight, but get a little bit of tension. And then you'll wrap a zip tie around that, tighten it up, cut your zip ties loose, and then you can tighten your belt path by moving the motor. There's actually been a number of printers that have used this type of design as far as looping belts. I know the, the baby belt does this on on their belts as well for the for the axes. And it works out surprisingly well to get a good amount of tension. And I'm just gonna start I'm going to cut it all the way back, but I'm just going to cut a bit. Lower my bed all the way. I just hit bottom, so good there. So I can leave a little bit of a tail in case I have to mess with it. And then going up, slack there. Um, as I come up, I just want to make sure that I will tap out before I get any air interference from that little bit of belt that I left at the top. Seems like I'm good. Both up and down. So with that, now it's just cut the tabs on your zip ties. Now we have our bed carriage done. We now have our bed carriage done. We've got our 4XY gantry system completed. We have our motors in place and everything belted up. Um, I guess the one thing that we can start doing now is work on running the electronics for what we can based on you know the stuff that we already have here like we can go ahead and wire motors and correct and i'm going to have to see if i can't talk fabrico into maybe 
getting me a kit that I could do on live stream, you know, sponsoring a kit. And if they won't, then I'll still probably buy one and build it. I don't know if we'll do it on live stream or not, but I'll probably get one and build it just to do a kind of a compare and contrast between self-sourced and the kit. Because everything I'm seeing in that kit is like premium high quality. Um, <coughs> sorry, I do have a Boron 01 bed coming from um, KB3D. I have the bed and the Kenovo heat pad. I already have a spare magnet and I've got like four sheets for my Z for my 01, so I don't, I don't need one of those. I was also looking, I mean, so right there, I, I hit the end stop, and you can see I'm losing probably close to a centimeter in height. So I have actually thought about um, using a different mod. This is the uh, low profile mod. It would basically screw into this cross bracket and it would require me to um, get one of my Omron switches and screw it in here and then solder the wires and just run regular wire. I mean that motor's close. It should be able to get there. Maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut the uh is the the I mean, these have pretty long ends to them, to the feet, and they would hit on that motor. So I'd have to probably cut the feet off on these some, just to bring them down. You're only going to use two wires anyhow, so cut the feet off, solder them up, and uh, get them going. But that would that would mount right in the middle, and then of course this this bed plate, the metal brace would trigger it. Yeah, exactly. So that that Fabrico kit, like I said, is very very nice. It's very very good quality. Um, it's like I said, it's going to have a special um, hot end design for it. Um, it's going to have the LDO polyamide bed, which will be nice. Um, the, um, the motors will have, um, you know, Rolahan or Rook branding on them, which is a nice little touch. I mean, they're still, I think, are they going to be Honey Badger motors, if I remember right, with, with the... You know, like dual branding probably. So yeah, I pulled the motor down. I mean that's that's pretty well tensioned right now. But the uh I mean there's I'll have to see, I'll have to mount it up and see if they'll touch and if they will, then I'll, what I'll do is I'll just cut them off. But I think that that's a good, I like this. I do like this, this idea and this thought about reusing, you know, an end stop that I've got a ton of. But I also think that, you know, mounting it here, one, cleans this up a little bit. And, you know, I, I, was, I was trying to go the easy route because with this, I've got plenty of these cables and I can just, you know, plug it in, shorten it up, make it work. Um, but I think the more I think about it, I just need to do it right. You know, run a clean cable chain. So um, these will probably come over and I'll, I'll add a 
some type of mount here for a cable chain if one already doesn't exist. And that way we'll bring all the cable chains down. I have seen the LDO kit. That's the other thing with the LDO kit that I think is really an awesome thing is rather than using, you know, like a side mount or an extruder, right? So then your extruder is going to mount to this piece and then you can have your spool somewhere and then run your up and over. It mounts a uh, Sherpa Mini right here at the back rail. And so you have a Sherpa Mini in a Bowden configuration to your hot end. Um, and I really, really like that because I'm running the Sherpa Mini on my V0 and on my Ender 3, the uh, Ender 3 over here in the corner. And I've run uh, ABS, ASA, uh, carbon fiber, because that one does have a, a hardened steel nozzle on it. I've run the carbon fiber um, pet G through it and it just it sings I had no problem with it and the mercury rising while well, it's printing down there um, it's running the orbiter 2 and I'm still running the the um, factory um, filament sensor which is mounted you know it's, it's like hanging down mounted off the back of that carriage which means you've got like a good 400 um, millimeters worth of length when it triggers. So what I'm what I'm waiting on is I've got a pan bus board coming for it, and because it's running an Eva 2.4 uh, hot end setup. And I'm going to go ahead and mount an EBB 36 to the back of the orbiter extruder and run CAN bus. And when I do that, I believe I've got all the connections on there that I need that I'm going to put the orbiter 2 filament sensor on it. So the filament sensor is going to be right there at the extruder. So you'll have a lot less waste when, when you use that. So. And I think, like I said, we're sort of at a stopping point. Um, I did, other than the motors, um, I did also get um, a couple of power supplies that, that I ordered. These are this came off of Amazon and their 24 volt 8 amp output. Um, so they're 24 volt 8 amp output. Yeah, 24 volt 8 amp output on these. And they come with the barrel connector. So I figured what I could do is mount the barrel connector and I did find a, I'll say like a clam mount system. So I've got that printed out and it's just a through bolt. I think I need to do heat sets here and this will capture around the plastic part. Clamshell it in, bolts from the bottom to hold that in, and these will mount on the lower rail, lower rail. That'll give me the opportunity to plug the the power in. And yeah, and I, and I got a second one because I also need um, a similar setup for the um, for the baby belt printer. Um, not sure if you're familiar with that printer, Gulsifer. So let me let me do a show and tell on that one. I'll try and get those couple of things mounted. Um, as you all may have seen, I've also put little rubber feet on the bottom of this, just to make it um, 
a little bit easier. So if it was right on this bench, it was, I mean, it slides around a bit, but if it was just the plastic, it would slide around way, way. Um, so this is a project by Rob Mink of Princeps. Now currently it's funny because the power supply is about as big as this thing is, but this is the baby belt. Um, and this is an older version of the kit, the newer version um, on the front panel here. It has a spot to put the power inlet, you know, the little five volt uh, DC, and, as well as a push button power on off switch. So you can have that moment switch there as well. But these are uh, five volt unipolar motors that you take the, the blue cover off and you cut a trace and you remove one wire, which is the common ground wire, and you turn them into bipolar motors so that they have more torque. Well, you have seen it. And then you've got the belt with the worm gear drive for the belt. I really need to work on this. The tolerance is just a little bit too tight. But the newer version adds a plate underneath here to provide a little bit of support. And it's a standard reality end. It just uses three millimeter linear rods, PTFE tube to provide the bearing for it. But yeah, this is a cool little printer. And it's, a, it's an easy way, once again, I mean, these motors are fairly cheap. Um, it's running. The standard uh, SKR V3 Mini V3 board that everybody seems to be using. You even use these same uh, motors for your extruder, which is built in on the side. And it's just a really cool little printer. He's had it at um, Birth and Earth, and I'm sure he's going to have it out at Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest. And uh, as well as back out at Murph and Earth this year, provided he's not under the weather. So yeah, I think we're at a stopping point for today on our Rook. We made some progress. We're belted up. It's looking more and more like a printer. I think off stream, I'm going to um, just mount up one of my end stops on this and just check and see what that clearance is like, see if I can do it or if I might have to, like I said, I might have to um, cut the, uh, the legs down just a little bit so that I have room to, to mount it without hitting the motor. And hey, Stephen Poole, how's it going? You're, you're coming in at the end. We have a, a mechanically sound printer. Um, we did, Go ahead and uh, the Creality motors, I took a length of belt and I did some looking and the Creality motors with the pressed on pulleys just were not lining up worth a darn. So I did order some uh, stepper online motors yesterday. Um, they're just standard stepper online. I got a five pack of them off of Amazon. And so we're going to go with those. They're going to work fine in this application. So I've got the uh, XY up top, the Z at the bottom. We've got our belt in place all the way around. We are going to run a Big Tree Tech uh, SKR Pico board. And right now it is uh, wired up to a Raspberry Pi 0W. It's not the 0 2, so I can't run input shaper on it. But what I can do is run a extension cable. So is this going to get power and do communications through the through the uh, Pico? And now I have a side dongle that I can plug my input shaper in, which is a which is the uh, Adafruit 
ADXL 345, the Adafruit ADXL 345, and it's wired up to a Raspberry Pi Pico. So the nice thing is, is I already have the serial number and everything for this. So I just have to drop the same config from one printer to the next for input shaper and make sure to tell it the right bed coordinates, of course. And then the nice thing is, is all I've got to do is uncomment one line in my printer config, plug this in, do a restart, and it'll come up, it'll recognize the Raspberry Pico, and I can sit there and start doing the, uh, the input shaper because the Pico is going to do all the heavy lifting and computation. So the Raspberry Pi Zero, you cannot do input shaper on the Zero or Zero W because it just doesn't have enough processing power and oomph. You can with the um, with the Zero Two W, but that's the nice thing with this. And I've used the same dongle to run input shaper on the. Uh, uh, zero G Mercury downstairs, um, Mercury Rising, which is printing in the bottom left of your screen, and the Voron Zero One and Red Dragon, which is the Voron switch wire right behind me. Once I get the DBot back up and running, I will input shape it as well as Blue Dragon, which is sitting down on the ground. Exactly. There, there is a place on the back. All you got to do is add two heat sets and you can mount your input shaper to the back. Now these I don't think are the same hole pattern size as mine. Yeah, the spacing's just a little off. But, I mean, that's you can print a small adapter piece to make that work. That's no big deal. Um, yeah, I mean that that's that's perfect. In fact, I may I would probably make an L shape adapter piece that so that the ADXL will sit on top of the rook or the rookery and screw in place to provide the rigidity. Because that way it's lined up with the X, Y, Z motion system appropriately. And you don't have to sit because like when you when you mount it on a stealth burner, it's mounted sideways, which means you can't look at the X axis. You need to look at the Z axis on your graph, figure out where what the frequency is. Frequency will probably be a little bit different. Oh, you know what, Ocetacraft? You mentioned that, and I was like, that would be cool, especially if you had, like, some type of dragon emblem on the side that was breathing down at the bottom where the hot end's at. Do it on both sides. That would probably come out really like badass if you had a, a MMU or AMS or Herpfa or anything like that. That could come out really good. So yeah, between now and, and Saturday stream, I will go ahead and test fit a couple of these pieces um, just to save everybody some time of watching me play around and I may even do crimping offline. Not that I have a problem with crimping on stream, it's just boring for everybody else, you know, um, especially since this should be the center of the show. Um, but yeah, we should have the bed in uh, this week. We'll have the hot end in this week because I did a, I have a CR touch. Give me a CR touch. I have a Voron or a Revo CR edition. I have one coming from KB3D along with the bed. And I also have one coming from uh, B3D. One way or the other, it's, it's going to get a CR Edition Revo, and we'll, we should have the bed for next time. 
then I will make the decision of whether or not I'm going to continue with this and just eat the extra, you know, eat the loss of about a centimeter out of the build height, or if I'll wind up doing a custom, not a custom, but you know, an actual uh, solder and wire job to get a and stop down here in the normal location. Um, I do have a mount for a 4010 fan for a side blower fan that I will blow over the electronics to keep those cool, and that'll come from one side. And like I said the um, the mount for the 5 volt DC power plug. I will go ahead and get that you know ready to go, and and you know we'll do that on stream. I, I don't want to say it, we won't. That I'll do everything off stream and they just go see it's done. That's how easy it is. Boom, it's just done. Um, but I do want to get some stuff at least prepared to make the stream a little bit easier flowing. So sticker time. Yeah, well, and I was thinking, okay, with this flat surface, I could put stickers on here. You know, like I said, I got some parts from KB3D, so maybe put a KB3D, maybe an uh, E3D online for the Revo and stuff, and sticker this up. Or, well, I can probably still do that, but I'm also going to print the um, the other plate that's designed for this that has the Rook logo on it. So I would do black background with the Rook logo in gold. To go with the black and gold theme and yes next saturday um come hell or high water even if i've got to like disassemble another printer to get parts this will be pushing plastic you think i just i i will pull the bed out of the v01 and make this work somehow If I have dragon stickers, I will put them on Rookery. If I can find, if I can find a nice dragon pattern that will fit that, um, like I said, we have a, a cry cut. My wife's going to be home tomorrow. I could probably get her to, to, yeah, we can probably work together to find a design and print out some vinyl stickers that we can put on it. Um, I can't talk about the simple core because I haven't built one. If Zombie is still around, or if you jump on Zombie Stream, he has a simple core, and he can definitely give you a rundown on the simple core versus, you know, the Rook or anything else if you want. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I said, that um, my wife wanted a cry cut, so I got her the cry cut, which was. I'll say I, I still came out better on that end because she got the cry cut and I got a Shaboko 3XL. This was a while ago. Um, and since then, we I kept trying to lay the groundwork for a laser. And I was thinking, okay, the, la the Focus, what, FE40 or whatever? Well, it's an expensive laser. So, you know, we can get that and give that a shot and and dip our toe in that. She kept saying, no, 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 we don't need another toy. And we went to a local, I'll say con, um, that was at our local library here in, in Sanford, North Carolina. And if you drive through Sanford, North Carolina, you'll realize you're like, you had a con? It was a little strange. Um, part Ren Fair, part con, part, you know, Gaming. It was it was interesting, but anyhow, uh, there was a lady there that was selling signs, and Jen's like, "Oh, what kind of of CNC do you have?" And she goes, "I don't. These are laser cut." Boom! I saw the light go on and the opportunity. I was like, "So, are you interested in a laser now?" She goes, "Well, maybe." So I happened to buy an X Tool D1. Uh, 20 watt diode laser and we've got you know we've got the I'll say the pop-up sort of like wham bamish type enclosure for it with the vent um, and I also have the uh, 
Oh, the, uh, I was going to say error assist, but yeah, that is what it's called. You know, basically it's the, the air that'll help blow the smoke away from the lens so that the lens doesn't get dirty and you get a cleaner cut. So we've got that. The only thing I don't have for it is the rotary tool, which is a little bit expensive. And who knows, we might wind up doing a rotary tool down the road. I think my my coffee cups need, you know, some logo-ish type stuff. Um, 50 or 100 watt. Funny you should mention that. Um, I believe... X Tools just came out with a 100 watt laser. So, yeah, pay attention because it uses the exact same gantry system. All you're doing is swapping the laser module between the 10, the 20. They've got the one, I can't remember uh, what the bandwidth is. Um, Tripod's Garage has, has done the review on it um, for the metal. More, more literal metal engraving um, versus just, say, like burnishing. Um, it's the X tool, literally the letter X tool, um, and it's the uh, D1 system. They have an M1, which is kind of like their version of a Glowforge, but the reason I like the D1 is it comes in like a like a two foot by two foot um, gantry system, but you can buy the extensions for it so you can make it twice as deep, which means you can then cut larger pieces. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely Google X Tool D1 and, and you can find out some info on it. Um, I really, I, I say I like it. I've used it very little. I actually, I bought it for my wife, and she has been working on it. She was going to make the, uh, she was working on just doing some prototypes, but she was going to make some names, uh, uh, plates for the printers. And what we would do is we would, we would get them laser etched, maybe clean up the, the toastiness on them, and then... Um, either uh, just seal them or maybe stain them and then seal them. And we'll just put a piece of magnetic tape across the back because these are metal. And that way I can just, you know, boom, there's Red Bike. You know, boom, there's Red Dragon. And if I move them around, I can just pop these off and move them wherever they're you know, so if I ever rearrange, I have an in place to arrange for it. So yeah, but we got the laser. I've got, I don't, it's, so the XL is like the middle size. It's, it's a 16 by 32 uh, inch cutting area. And if I need something bigger than that, my brother has the Shape Oco 4. XXL, so it's almost like a four foot by, I think it's a 32 by 32 cutting area, but it's like a four foot by four foot, you know, overall build uh, machine area. So I, I could just, you know, use the same software to, to develop the files, and then it's just a matter of running up there with the material, cutting it, and coming back. I mean, it's a long trip, but I'm sure I could throw something else in there like a micro and make it worthwhile. Yeah, so um, I do have a serial number for this. They will send you, uh, so you, when you apply for a serial for Voron, you do it via Reddit, and you have to have, um, I'll say proof of life. So you need a short video of it moving, right? And your wiring needs to be cleaned and everything needs to be buttoned up um, and full movement. You don't have to have full enclosure or anything like that. You know, that's fine, just your wiring is neat. And 
your your decks are in place and I say proof of life, which is it's moving under its own power, and that's enough to get a serial. Once it's reviewed by the team through the queue, you will get a message via Reddit that your serial number's been approved and what that serial number is. And there will be a link to go to this um, uh, Google, I think it's a Google Docs drive that will have a nameplate. Now, it's up to you to figure out how to make that nameplate work and mount on your stuff. It's really not a Voron thing. It's one of the one of the people in the community has basically coded up just doing a nameplate. Um, but it's a nice it's a nice touch that, that you can get the nameplate. But I was going to do custom nameplates, and in fact, when I do my uh, main sale, like this will be. Um, Gold Dragon, and in parentheses, I'll have Rook Mark 1 and whatever the serial number. Right? Yeah, it's a little STL nameplate um, that you can print out, and it will have like uh, places to do either um, has options for mounting. I think it's. Uh, Places to put like heat set inserts so that you can basically through bolt it onto your skirt or something. Yeah, it's just something that's really neat and cool. But okay, folks, it's 8 30, and I think I want to go ahead and call it a night for tonight. Um, I didn't I've, get that. Did you try? I've got a couple, yeah, now she wants to be helpful. Um, I've got a couple of things to work on tonight to get ready for the next stream. I need to order a couple of parts, and which should get here. Oh, hey, Wester, you're back. How's it going, sis? So you're back in time to where I was basically going to say, like, hey, I'm winding down for the night. I've hit a... I've had a natural stopping point because the bed that I've ordered isn't in yet, and the um, hot end, I ordered a Revo uh, CR, so it's the E3D Revo, um, but in the Creality style uh, mount or the heat sink. So once those come in, which they should be here before Saturday, um, for Saturday stream, we'll go ahead and get those mounted. We'll get the rookery mounted, which it looks kind of funny, but there will be a 3010 fan in the front, and then it's got dual uh, 4010 blower motors that blow straight down and out the side for part cooling. So this will mount um, just like that, and it'll have a couple of screws in the back that will hold it in place. So, and then we'll also have to do some wiring to make sure that the wire is long enough to go down to the bottom. We'll get our motors wired up, but right now what we have is the, uh, the motors are in place. We did swap the motors out from the uh, standard Creality ones because the, um, the pulleys would not line up. So... All right, thanks, Chewy. Thank you for being out uh, and joining us tonight. That was awesome. A five kilogram spool holder. Um, can I recommend one? No, because I, I haven't used one. Um, a gentleman by the name of Ivan Miranda uses. I think exclusively five kilogram spools. In fact, he got Polymaker PLA Red by the pallet load. Um, and all of it was either three or five kilogram spools. All of it. Because he has like a meter by meter by meter cubed printer. Like he prints big. Um, but yeah, there. I'm sure there are some files out there to do it. I just. 
I've never had a need to run a spool that big. No, I think it would be awesome though to have like a five kilogram spool sitting next to this, being fed into it. You know that that would be awesome. I will see the craft. I'll I'll, uh, I'll ping you on Discord and let you know um, what I think of that little design. And thank you know definitely a good night, Chewy. Thanks for being here. Have a good night, Acetocraft. Craft. And like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and drop off. We're gonna go ahead and raid over to someone. Is she? Oh, Shannon's up and having her birthday stream, isn't it? Done and done. Um, she's playing Destiny Two. She's yep. Yeah. I've definitely watched a lot of Shannon Esrona 58 stuff and her um not only does she have a uh rescue Iron Man suit that is just phenomenal but she also has a Pittsburgh Steelers themed one cuz she lives in Pittsburgh and has done a lot of those uh she'll actually wear it to football games and other uh events for those so yeah we will definitely go over to um go visit shannon on her stream tonight um but as i was mentioning uh westry i did get shipment notification of that package you're sending me it should be here thursday as soon as i get it it will go out in the garage and it will be open to the air to try and air out some um and see how bad that is We'll try and get that squelch up on the workbench as soon as we're done with the rook here. But we should have everything that we need to push through this on Saturday. I'm sorry, fix that, not Saturday, Sunday. Because Saturday I have to be in the woods teaching some people intricacies of hunting it. Oh, you've seen them both in person. Oh, that would be so cool. That would be so amazing. So, yeah. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here. Um, I do want to shout out to Zombie Hedgehog, even though I believe he's gone for the night, because he came in and, you know, gave me some pointers and tips as I was going through the build, along with Rolahan, book designer. Oh, I should put it like this. So, along with Rolahan, who is the designer of the Rook, uh, and the Rook Mark I, uh, as well as we've had Gulsifer here with us for most of the evening. And Gulsifer is the one that's made many of the mods that you see on this printer right now, which is the, uh, the speed gantry setup. So, the uh, updates in the idler, the motor mounts, the actual XY single piece gantry. Um, I believe these are your your feet with the Rook logo on them as well. And I believe it was somebody else that did the um, the actual X end stop. But thanks for being here, Gulsifer. That is awesome. Um, I'm not sure where you're located around the world, but I will be streaming next on Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Um, so if you're not here, please, uh, you know, catch my. Okay, yeah, Kenrog did the bed in the end stop. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, um, definitely. If, if you can make it Sunday, great. If not, please catch the replay so you can see it done and pushing plastic. I know uh, my Sunday times are a lot earlier in the day don't work for everybody um, normally I, I stream Tuesday nights and Saturday mornings but the next two Saturdays I have prior commitments for my hunting mentoring group where I'm a mentor um, teaching adult onset hunters new to the game that don't have proper support systems the intricacies of hunting for primarily deer but we also do uh, turkey and thank you so much for being here with that we're going to go ahead and raid out to esrona es 
minutes 58. Good night, Chewy. And if you can, Chewy, come on over with me to, to uh, see Shannon. Just pop in and say hi. Wish her a happy birthday. And uh, yeah, let's just go over and give her a raid. Say hi. And, you know, pop out if you need to. And we will catch back up the next time around. Thank you, everybody, for being here and being with me for this build. Have a good night.